Hey, um, so in this section of the tutorial video, we'll be going through the move tool. So um, let's just create a little kind of basic rectangular shape here and press on the move tool. So um, you can see in the settings over here, you have a mode which is elastic, which we'll cover in a bit, the size, the strength, and the inner radius. So by default, you'll probably be in the maximum strength and maximum radius kind of thing, and the shape will be circular. So how it works is like, it just kind of like allows you to grab a chunk of your geometry and treat it like real clay. But um, my personal way of using this tool is kind of like dropping the inner radius to zero and reducing the strength down to probably like 10 to 20 around the range. And it just kind of feels a bit more like I'm, I'm pulling like a Play-Doh or something, you know? Which I think which is what most people will be more familiar with versus the high intensity kind of like version of this tool. And they have this option which they added on I think last year, which is the active layer only. So um, by toggling it on, you can actually have just it affect the layer that you're working on. But if you have a extra scalp layer, which we are just going to make something simple and change the color for clarity. Okay, you can toggle it off and it will affect all the layers all together like that. So yeah, you can remember just to turn it on and off as, as needed and hop back to the elastic mode feature. Okay, this is I think pretty new in medium. I think it was the last update that they added the thing. So it actually, what it does is that it conserves the volume of your geometry. Instead of just like moving the, the the voxel stuff totally all around and generating like new 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 volume with it. So it's kind of more useful if you are like working on faces and you're just trying to make the things smile on one side. And yeah, that's, a, that's kind of an example I can think of my head at the moment for how to use elastic movement. I personally don't use it so much because I'm kind of more used to the, the, the regular moving method. So yeah. That's kind of how I really use the move tool on my my day to day basis, and we'll be moving on to the flatten tool in a bit. Thanks. All right. Um. So we'll be talking about the flatten tool, and for the tool settings wise, I kind of just like leave it at default, but the um, I'll change up the size as needed. And I don't really use constraint to surface because um, the way I use it is kind of like this. I have the edge that I kind of just want to create a bevel. And just like kind of push down the thing like that. Oh, so um, as you can see, I think the, the best way to use it, I mean not best way, but like the one of the ways to use it is just kind of increase the mesh resolution quite a bit. But there may be a lag on the tool's reaction, as you can see here. So what you can do is kind of like just decrease the thing slightly when you're blocking in your stuff. You just use it like this. Although the edges may not be the best looking for that. And in that case, actually, I'll kind of just use the the clay tool with the subtraction uh, tool on it and just like slice across the bevel if I need to. Okay. Um, next up would be the cut tool. Um, I'll use this occasionally. It's just kind of like for splitting geometry. And it'll take a while to process and it will actually become a separate piece. As you can see. And it will like kind of like very nicely um, split up 
the items in the hierarchy editor. And normally I use this when I needed to separate some parts from something which I merged down or whatnot. But ah, that's kind of it for the cut too. Um, so for the inflate tool over here, it just what it does is actually kind of like just creates a volume on the surface that you can actually control. And same goes for it for the subtraction mode. You just like trim away the surface volume. Um, and the options are actually largely similar to what I feel is the clay brush. You know, you have your steady stroke, your uh, so your addition and your subtraction of the volume, and your your strength of the tools. So it depends on like what you're comfortable with at this stage. Whether you prefer like the kind of feedback you get from this tool versus the clay brush, for example, for drawing on surfaces. I personally prefer more of the clay brush. You know, I just feel like it kind of works better for for me, and your mileage might vary with the inflate tool. So um, I think the last one or two tools we're gonna talk about would be the paint tool, as the name implies. Uh, it changes the color of your geometry. So if you hold down on the palette button over here, you bring up like your color selector with your values over here. And what it does actually is it allows you to like kind of also airbrush like colors onto the, the surface pretty nicely to create a gradation. Let's just, just do a quick one over here. Now as you can see it be actually it behaves a lot like a um, traditional air can spray brush and you can adjust your, your hardness which is the edges of your brush and the opacity which is like how how saturated the color would be. So uh, you can actually use this I mean if you're familiar with a spray spray can right it just actually feels really really similar I kind of like to push the model out a bit and kind of like spray at it at a distance as if I'm doing a model kit just feels at home doing that and they have a brush option if you want to like kind of go up and detail like maybe panel lining or something let's just like make it at maximum opacity and hardness just to show yeah so you can just draw on a surface like that pretty easily the last option they have is stomp so it kind of like just takes your entire geometry and applies the color wholesale to it. So it's good if you are trying to like isolate certain sections of your, your model very rapidly. Although sometimes it may or may not pick up on the, the geometry properly as you can see over here. So yeah, it's a little quirk that I think you should be aware of and I think they'll fix it soon down the road. And the last tool that we can go through now would be the smooth tool, which is like a second free tool that, that you, you, you will use in, in medium. So what it does is kind of like just gonna smooth out the surface. Let's just see. Now let's make it a bit more obvious over here. And we can drop the resolution slightly. So actually what it does is just like just to serve, it will just really smooth out the surface detail. works best like if it's really really high res but the performance will suffer a bit as, as what we talked about for certain tools or so beforehand. So for settings wise the smooth tool kind of has these things your addition your average and your subtraction and your steady stroke. So yeah I believe we've covered most 
of the tools here other than the swirl tool, which for I which I'm not gonna be going into. And that's kind of it for like the basic uh, Adobe Medium kind of like navigational tool set. So I guess we can move on to sculpting the tank. But yes, actually there's one more thing I would like to cover before we move on to the tank sculpting portion. Um, that's actually importing the reference plane, reference images plane for the project. So actually, um, if you push down on your left thumbstick, you'll see the center option, the square here. There's an add image option here. And you just navigate to your computer's directory and just find the folder where you have them. In this case, I already have it loaded up. And I just select whatever I need. If you select one, you just be like one rectangular plane. But if you have multiple pictures selected, it will just kind of lay it out pretty nicely for you. See, as you can see here. And the way how it kind of works also is like like an extra scalp layer. So if you look at your hierarchy editor over here, um, you inherit the name of your JPEG file. And you can actually just like move them around individually to you wish. So sometimes for management sake, uh, I like to group like maybe some of them right just down into a single image. So the mini tanks JPEG will now be like the parent of all the, um, the images and you just like move them around as a group or even scale them accordingly. You know? That is kind of it for reference image planes. I don't really have a complex way to use them. I'm pretty sure that there are some people who um, already covered this on other tutorials or like how they, they import it into the correct axis or whatnot but I personally I don't really use that so yeah that's kind of it from me and let's go sculpting then <laughs> 